right, man. I seen an article by Ann Kellister, uh, Kellister, I heard if I mispronounced that, on Piston Power, uh, saying two things that can cost Troy Weaver his job this summer. And they looking pretty, one of them is pretty obvious that it's already causing some some traction or some issues, some tension in the organization. Let's talk about the two things. Check out the Detroit Piston Talk playlist, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and the subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notification, Chris Chance, get notifications, we go live. Or drop a video. Um, one of them is trading the fifth pick, and the obvious one is the culture search. I speak on the culture search on the latter half of things. And um, yeah, trading the fifth pick is is a risk. I mean, the Pistons have had opportunities to do with the Nuggets and what the Miami Heat have done. Um, especially the Denver Nuggets, you know, taking Nikola Jokic late. Um, you know, drafting Michael Porter Jr. A lot of them dudes was meat and potatoes of the draft. I think Jokic might have been a second round pick. Um, Michael Porter Jr. I mean, we could, I mean, we were supposed to have that pick, but the pick that, or one of those picks right around there, we sent it to the Blake Griffin trade. I mean, I mean, you talk about Devin Booker passing, passing on Kawhi Leonard, passing on Paul George, passes on Giannis Antetokounmpo. I mean, I'm always going to bring up passing on Carmelo Anthony. Um, just some of the obvious picks that they are obvious, uh, players that they passed on in the draft. They had opportunities to put pieces together. And then players like Chris Middleton, they had that, you know, went on to be, uh, a good player somewhere else. And you need, you got a need at the wing, right? in and there, somebody that can defend and shoot the ball and, you know, do some things that Chris Middleton can do. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, they just got to drive better, and they say, well, you know, we got a surplus of young talent. I don't really see it that way. I see you got Ivy Dern and Kay Cunningham, and if you want to say Wiseman in the chamber, cool. Um, it might be Wiseman, Kay, and Jaden Ivy from Troy Weaver perspective, and that's the scary thing about it. But, uh, but yeah, guys like Bagley, Isaiah Stewart, Killian Hayes, dude, you could throw them in a the trash can. And I, wouldn't, and I wouldn't think twice about it, so I don't really count them as being young player viable options. I count them as you know, be like, you know, uh, you down as Haslam at the end of the best type players. You know what I'm saying? You know, get the confetti off the floor and we win the championship. You know what I'm saying? I don't count them as rotational players. And that's like, I, I, I continue to say this on this channel. That's that's part of the problem that they count those guys as, as guys that's going to help them win right now. And if you didn't think Sadiq Bay was going to help you win right now, I mean, why the hell do you think Killian Hayes and Isaiah Stewart will? Killian Hayes had a, a, a had a had a small little stretch. It wasn't even a insanity type stretch, and then he went trash, and his fans went silent. You know what I'm saying? And then the end of the year come up when everybody playing the backups to the backups to the backups and the G leaguers to the G leaguers to the D leaguers. Then he have you know a couple good games, and his fans start poking their chest out again. The same thing repeat. You know Marvin Bagley, same thing repeat. You know don't can't stop nobody, can't defend nothing. He start off, get injured, and then he come back and have a couple of 2020 games when everybody wore down from the season grind, and he fresh, and then he fade away. You know, Isaiah Stewart's the same thing. He's too small. He don't have a position. He's one of them guys, I mean, that's going to come off the bench, and that's just what he is at the best. But ain't none of them part of the youth future. So, of course, if you get an opportunity and you find another talent, you could develop another talent, just figure it out. It's simple as that. You don't want to trade the fifth pick, and you trade it for nothing, and then, you know, you trade it for nothing, and then, you know, then some some superstar, some Devin Booker or some Paul George, you pass up on them, and then you looking stupid, and then you gave the fifth pick up for nothing. A guy that didn't work and do half the stuff that he could have did, and then you looking bad. But he'd probably be fired by then. But in hindsight, he, you know, people still going to be putting bullshit on his name, Troy Weaver. So you trying to force you trying to force a, a pick. In my opinion, you might want to be trying to move up to the third pick and see if you can get Brandon Miller or something like that. I think you should be looking to acquire some some pieces, you know. But, yeah, this team ain't. Yeah, they got three or four really good, you know, or, you know, prospective young pieces. But at the end of the day, keep adding the young guys there. Yeah, you need a veteran, but y'all come to the harsh reality that you ain't even going to, uh, you ain't going to win right now. You ain't going to win right now. It's as simple as that. No matter, you know, K Cunningham got to take a giant leap. You got to hope Jay Nivey don't regress. You know, a lot of these dudes have, have regressed. 
Second year players from going to last season, they did regress a little bit. Maxi excelled, but he was in a great situation. Nobody really down could think of took a really giant leap like you want him to. So, um, but yeah, you know that fifth pick going wrong. I mean, you got to make sure you do right now. If you get an opportunity, you can put some put some pieces together, and you get a guy you really like. You know what I'm saying? That can really really help you. And that's different. But, you know, in my opinion, right now, you don't know what's available. It's looking like it won't be much available. You might as well stay put and um, and just draft the best guy. And the Cam Whitmore don't look too bad. I mean, Jed Howard ain't bad. Uh, Monty Bay somewhere down the line ain't bad. Hey, man. They they wanted to stick and continue to develop Killian Hayes. Like, yo, them guys better than Killian Hayes right now. Right now. So... But, yeah, and then you talk about the coaching search. There's already friction there in the coaching search because once you look at it, right, once you look at it and you look at the coaching search and you look for what it really is, he had three names that didn't nobody know shit about other than the guys who had NBA careers. But as far as coaching, other than Kevin Ali, I didn't even know he was coaching over Tommy Lee. Didn't nobody know nothing about it. And Tom Gores rejected those coaches. And offered a whole bunch of money to, to Monty Williams, and he said no. So it sounded like he he went over Troy Weaver head and said, "Ah, I don't want them three guys. I want them." So it's, if it's already some confusion, and the coaches that Troy Weaver handpicked ain't really ain't really cutting it, you need to cut it, cut it, cut it. You know, and they ain't cutting it. He already in some deep ass shit, dude. He are he already halfway, you know, halfway. He got one foot out in the door, one foot out the door. Cause when the owner said, I met with all three of them, they wasn't shit. That ain't never no good sign. That ain't never no good sign. I met with them marks, they wasn't shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. It's what it is, what it is. So, you know, both of them slip-ups can, you know, be the reason he could be up out here, especially that coaching one. You know, the three homeboys you trying to... And then it didn't hurt. It didn't help that his homeboy, the GM, caught a case with that sister. You know, and I always tell young guys, man, don't learn the hard way. Learn learn ahead of time. Let's listen to what these older guys and guys be telling y'all. Don't mess with them women at the job, bro. Now, if you ain't, she ain't, you know, y'all ain't no longer working there. Cool. I said y'all, not one. Y'all both no longer working there. Yeah. Cause think about it. If something happened before two something, you do something and something come of it. You know what I'm saying? She know where your place of employment at. You could lose your whole whole shindig. She come up there acting or nothing. You lose your job. Or she go down to child support. Yeah, the wine work down here. Or Billy work down here. I know it do. You know, all that stuff. So that's a little bit too much intent regardless. And then all that, you know, harassment shit, they favor them. You go tell them, oh, she harassing me. I remember I filed a case on this chick I worked with that was harassing me, dude. Just a little hateful, spiteful. She just want, she just needed her box rock, but I wouldn't, I wasn't playing them games. I learned my lesson long before that. And you just, they don't go do shit, man. As a man, they, they laugh at shit like that. But trust me, it ain't even worth, no matter how fine they is, no matter how nice they is, you know what I'm saying? No. No matter happy hour after work, trust me, call center factory whatever don't do it don't do it when it don't work out then it's just too much chaos too many work girls in the world too many women in the world just mess with women you work with no like i said down the line y'all no longer work there no more whatever okay cool that might be a smooth one but you know, i'll be kind of passing game like that from experience but then again you got to understand too dude there's so many women that look alike there's so many women that's it's more of them than us. So don't ever forget that. It ain't worth your job. And I, I probably think Tom Gore is probably like, eh, his decision making sketchy. He hired his homeboy. He got a black out in the organization. If they didn't sign him to that extension, he probably would have fired the fuck out of Troy Weaver, dude, to be real. He had a whole 2020 draft that did not work out. Then you looking at the team. You go out here. You trade for James Wiseman. You take our first round pick from last year. Throw him on a bench star, James Wiseman and Jalen Duran. Then you know his ass was was a little hot then too. You know he was in trouble when he wrote that open letter. You know Dog was in trouble when he wrote that open letter and shit. That love ballot to Detroit. You know he was in trouble. Started talking about well, you know K was 
When a motherfucker start off in the letter and don't take responsibility, say, well, Kay Cunningham was hurting and we got a very high draft pick. He was banking on winning the lottery. Then what's so funny about it, he turned around and he was like, yeah, yeah, my father, grandfather said don't never hope for nothing, so I can't be disappointed. We still got a great pick in the draft. And then you hear, oh, I'm trying to trade the pick in the draft. Man, nigga full of shit, dude. You can't bullshit a bullshitter. Sorry for the belligerency. I know it ain't a word. I made it one. You know what I'm saying? He bullshit, dude. I'm telling you, dude, he ain't believing the shit that he's saying. Trust and believe me, dude. He got so many contradictions just in that little small statement that I just made. So many contradictions, dude. He was banking on that line. Oh, we got a great pick, dude. Oh, nigga, I'm trying to trade this mother. Yeah, yeah, I traded for a nine back week. You know what I'm saying? I traded for a little, little quarter. <laughs> But yeah, let me know what y'all think, man. But yeah, like I told y'all, man, that man, he on the script, he on the rocks, he on he on the cliff. He like Goro in the original Mortal Kombat movie. He holding on by by just the thinness of the thread. He barely holding on, holding on, yeah. He he barely holding on. But uh, check out Detroit Piston Talk playlist. Hit the link tree. Find me on TikTok, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Appreciate y'all, man. Don't forget to check out my main channel right here on YouTube, Goodfella TV, for more videos like this or more sports pertaining to different sports and music entertainment. Appreciate the love and support. Peace.